Welcome to Cape Town in South Africa, where we're here to test the boat behind me. Now, this is the Leopard 46 PC Catamaran. It is a brand new model, literally just launched at the Miami Boat Show a couple of weeks ago. And this is hull number two. We're going to take it out to sea, give it a thorough sea trial, show you around the yacht and explain exactly what it is that makes not just power catamaran special but this particular Leopard 46 PC. Now you can get a good idea of the scale of this boat, it's 46 foot long and they like to build to a ratio of around about 2 to 1, so it's 46 foot long and 23 feet wide. And that makes for a very spacious boat. Now, if you take a close look at the design of the 46 PC, you can see that the two hulls are joined by a really full deck across the middle of them. So it's not just a narrow, flat deck. You can see there is quite a chunky depth down there. And that is to create space and volume inside that part of the hull so that you can get the beds to lie across the bow there. So the beds themselves lie across the boat and the head, the, the head of both beds will join in the middle there in that extra volume created by that deep bridge deck. You see it's got those very upright stems right forward on the bow and then that vertical windscreen. Quite a distinctive shape. But that's what creates so much volume on board and such great visibility from inside that saloon. Just passing under the bridge, the marina in Cape Town. This is a brand new model which is built at the Robertson and Kane factory in Cape Town, South Africa. And they have flown us all the way over here to experience this in its home waters. So first, let me show you a little bit about the boat itself. Now this is a proper full beam catamaran. There's no attempt to make it as thin as a mono hull. We've got this enormously wide cockpit. And of course, you've got twin bathing platforms either side with a wire across, but you can give access down to the bathing platform here with a ladder down into the sea. And then there's a large hydraulic platform, lowering platform on the back where you can store the tender. And of course that goes right down into the water and comes back up again, making it very easy to launch and recover. And there's another platform over on this side. So when you've got all that beam to use, you really can be very generous with the socializing spaces. So the aft cockpit, enormously wide table, lots of seating around it, C-shape, nice thick teak, a little inlay, just a nice bit of detail. And then this is artificial teak deck, but nice light color so it doesn't get too hot in the sun. And these huge engine access hatches. I'll show you around then when we're back in harbor and it's, the engines aren't running. Now, of course, when you've got all that beam to play with, you don't have to be stingy with these side decks. So the really wide, spacious side decks on here. You can see there is a gate through if you want to get down onto the dock. And even though there's really no need for much support because you can walk with one feet side by side rather than carefully one in front of the other, but there's handrails on both sides. So really nice and safe and easy to move forward to the foredeck area. And then a fantastic big foredeck here with little corner seats on each side and a big socializing space with two big sun pads here and both of these lift up 
and they have little supports that lock into place so you can have proper supportive headrests on either side and then a couple of huge storage lockers. Now I wouldn't normally do this underway but the advantage of having a big stable catamaran is it's incredibly easy to move around and it feels very stable. Now look at the size of those storage lockers. We've got one, two, three, four, six huge fenders in there and they barely even touch the sides. Absolutely masses of space. And there's not just one of those, there's two of them. There's another matching one on this side and then the anchor itself is under here. If I just pop that up. And there is the anchor, so drops down in between the two hulls, electric winch, and then there is a bridle because you've got the anchor right in the middle and there's a danger of the hulls swinging around it. You put a rope bridle out on either side that holds it nice and centrally in front of the boat. Drop that down. There we go. And let's make our way back down this side deck. Now you can see there is a kind of deck area here. On the older ones this used to be flat and you could put some sun cushions here but as part of the styling to keep it a little bit smoother and sportier they have left that as a slope so there is non-slip on there if you want to jump down off the front but they're not trying to encourage that. So move back down this side deck into the cockpit and now let's have a little look inside. So two sliding patio doors one on either side we'll just draw those back and there's a huge difference it suddenly feels really calm and quiet in here and I'm just going to clean the lens a little bit now this boat is due to be shipped to Europe and as such one or two things are missing there's obviously meant to be a full height fridge freezer that goes in there but you can see it is an aft galley design and very much focused on comfortable home from home living so really nice big open areas and almost domestic spec galley you've got a big sink here and then there's another big sink there now that's pretty unheard of in a boat this size to have two huge full-size sinks only a two burner hob on this one induction hob a melee oven and a small dishwasher, drawer style dishwasher, lives in there. Plenty of storage space, that's the bin. Little, but then there's a whole suite of cupboards on this side too. And another big drawer fridge there. See a few supplies already in that one. Lots more storage, charts light switches as you come in through the door very nice and convenient to get to and of course masses of storage all along this side I won't show you them all but you can get a feel for it the point is there is no shortage of storage space it's a really nice neutral color scheme it's not the fanciest boat you've ever seen but it's a really nice open light airy finish we've got 270 degree windows all the way around and then the doors at the back so effectively 360 degree views out and they've gone for vertical windows right on this forward part so traditionally you might have a more angled shape but actually it works really well you're not losing any space quite often you lose a lot of space underneath the windscreen when you've got a big slope but when you've got a big uh, slope on it you lose the space behind the dashboard that you can't really use and you lose the space on the foredeck. By having these big vertical windows you really don't lose any space and you get terrific view out. The other joy is that they put a central door in here which is really really handy so you can open this up, I won't do it now, but you get the idea you can get a flow of air right the way through here, three sturdy handles on there, lock it in position so it's nice and secure underway but you can open it up when it is nice and calm get a bit of breeze through the saloon and a really nice big social space this seating area over on this side 
there's another little sofa here and the inside helm position. To be honest, unless the weather's really bad, you're going to be wanting to helm it from up on the flybridge, but it is nice to have that option. But it's just a lovely open plan living space. There's no bulkheads to get in the way. You've got great visibility. We've lowered the blind on this side just to demonstrate it, but you can see it has got blinds all the way around that just drop down, but lift them all up and you've got fabulous visibility. Now, the other thing I should point out is how many lockers there are here. There's so much access for storage. You can see those are the batteries in there. What have we got in here? More batteries in there. And then further forward, everywhere you look, you can lift up the floorboards, a big storage locker there. Another big one here. Now let's drop down into the hulls. So here is the electronics panel. You've got really nice access. You've got all the breaker switches. You can check temperatures and battery state here as well as at the helm. Now this one has been set up with the three cabin layout and this is of course the owner's cabin and that means it occupies the full length of this starboard hull which is a real luxury so this is obviously the sleeping area in the stern of it which enjoys hull windows down the side you've got hull windows at the back onto the stern platform there is a small opening section here so you can get a bit of air inside it but look at the luxury of all this space going forward this is a kind of desk vanity area. A little bit of storage and a mirror there. This is obviously for the TV, TV that hasn't yet been fitted, but that swings out so you can watch TV from the bed. And then there's a kind of dressing area. Lots of storage here. Big drawers. That's not the finest quality woodwork you've ever seen. You haven't got any beautiful dove joints or solid timber, but it's very effective. It looks nice nice clean action more full-length mirrors here with hanging storage behind and then into the bathroom area at the forward end of the hull twin sinks lots of storage under there and there and again there's access absolutely everywhere to the bilges under here so it looks like we've got some of the sonar down there couple of vents through the hull, little sea cocks down into the water and then here is the shower itself, really big shower area, I mean that is enormous for a 46 foot boat, it's not some little cubicle, it is a proper walk-in shower, look I'm going to give you some idea of that, now I'm 6 foot 1 inch and there's a good few inches above my head and they don't even need a door on the shower, it's such a big area but they haven't even bothered putting a door on it because the water won't get that far out. There is a blind there, so you can open that up, enjoy the view out. It's a toilet in its own almost little mini cubicle. And there is a sliding door across here, so you can of course have privacy if you want it. And equally there's a sliding pocket door for the cabin itself. Oh, I think that's locked at the moment. Oh, it's locked open, but you can see that that slides across so you can seal this area off. And I see there's another big storage under the bed there and a really generous width bed there. I'm guessing that's somewhere between five and six foot wide. Now the alternative layout, if you want it, is if you go for the four cabin option, is of course you get a stern cabin here and then a forward cabin on this side with a corridor between them. And that's pretty much what there is in the other hull. So let's go across and show you that. So we're now in the port hull and facing to stern. And you can see here, there is still that same generous double bed. You've got the same width of hull. So effectively, you've got the same beam inside the cabin itself. You just haven't got quite the same floor space. But you also enjoy those windows out the back, the hull window. It's a fan set up here, a nice recessed lighting tucked away behind the ceiling panels and under the bed, just gives a nice soft vibe. And then 
every single cabin is en suite, even if you go for the four cabin option, every single cabin has its own bathroom. Obviously not quite as big as the owner's bathroom, but again, a separate shower area, opening window, get a bit of ventilation, privacy of your own toilet, and of course, sliding pocket doors to seal that off, as well as the door for the cabin itself, close that off, and then there is some hanging space behind it. So this is the aft cabin on the port side. And then moving forward through the hull, there is space here for a washer dryer. Quite a big LG washer dryer in there, so you can do all your laundry underway. And once again, you can see that all of these floor panels lift up. Again, giving access down into the bilges. But there's also plenty of space down there if you need to store extra gear that you're not gonna use all the time. Now this is the forward cabin. So the forward cabins, when you go for the four cabin option, they're actually set athwart ships. So the bed runs across the beam of the boat and that tucks up under the central bridge. So where the two hulls are joined, there is some actual volume in between the hulls rather than it just being a, a narrow deck. They have put some accommodation so that you can get the bed into that slot. So the bed is effectively sitting over the middle of the boat and the hull itself is running probably just about where that seat is. So that's how they create the extra space to get a really nice, generous double cabin forward as well. And that's rather nice because you're lying in bed looking straight out that hull window there. And then forward of this, there is another big storage locker here. And that's exactly the same actually in the owner's cabin on the starboard side, there is a similar locker in the shower area that leads through to another big storage area there. So masses of storage space on board. And both of these enjoy a safety hatch out onto the foredeck if you need it. It's really most of the time, it's just providing a bit of fresh air and natural light into the cabin, but also doubles as a safety hatch if you need to jump out through the front. And just moving back through the hull, and back on deck into the saloon where you can really enjoy that lovely open space and those fabulous views. And what I might just do is see if I can open the forward door on this now. Just twist these down. See they all just twist out and push that open. And that locks into place there. Holding it open and now there's a lovely breeze out on the foredeck. And it just means you've got very nice easy access outside. Walk right through the middle of the boat. Got a beautiful flow of air. Barely need to use the air conditioning. You can, of course, get air conditioning. But look at that. You slide those open. Now you've got a walkway right through the centre of the boat. Really nice setup for chartering. So much space, so many different socialising zones you can hang out in. You can have a party of three or four guests up on the foredeck, on the sun lounges here. You've got the cockpit at the back. And now let me show you up onto the flybridge, which is where you're really going to be spending most of your time. Up on the flybridge here. And look at the space here. This is all covered with a big hard top. There's no opening section in the hard top. But to be honest, there's so much air flowing through it, you don't really need any extra sun or light. It's a big helm station over to starboard. Really nice sociable bench. You can see this can get fit three people on there, no problem at all. Another bench for sitting underway, so really nice. You can have a good, probably six people, eight people facing forward there. 
lovely big dinette right in the middle of the flybridge and they clearly know what people get up to on boats if you just count the number of bottle and cup holders you've got four cup holders two bottle holders two more there two more in that corner and a big wet bar over to starboard lots of storage space under there sink lift up tap more storage a grill electric grill i mean what a lovely place to hang out and cook your freshly caught fish or steak on there fridge oh there's even a bottle of champagne down there and then big space on the stern here another couple of large sun pads but it's just the feeling of space you get on board there's there's no sort of awkward squeezing through little narrow gaps or leaning over there's just masses and masses of floor space and so easy to move around now you can look over the foredeck and that's what I mean you could sort of jump over there they're not encouraging it they haven't put any kind of walkway through there but you can see that they might be tempted just to walk down the front there Now helming a catamaran is a little bit different to a planing monohull boat. So you've got these nice wide hulls set far apart with very little resistance through the water and it gives you a very nice stable platform. And one of the pleasures of that, it means that it's really comfortable whether you're just at anchor or cruising along nice and slowly. But it also means that you don't have that awkward hump where you're trying to get up and onto the plane. A lot of big planing boats you'll find around about somewhere between 12 and 15 knots. You can feel the boat straining to get over it just going ahead very nice and slowly. We've got a thousand RPM on the engines. We've got twin 370 horsepower, they're 370 or three, 370 horsepower Yanmar engines and they're set well back in each hull. So you can barely hear them at this kind of speed. And you can see we're burning just 5.4 liters per engine. So a total of just about 11 liters per hour and speed wise we are probably doing around about six seven knots i would think okay six knots so we're doing 5.7 knots at this speed and burning 10 liters an hour i mean that's amazing for a big 46 foot boat that's very nice and efficient but then you can do that more or less at any speed and just pick your spot so we'll bring the revs up oh, i've got the revs here so i can see them so we're now we're doing 1500 rpm and seven knots and still we're burning 14 litres an hour per engine so just under well 28 litres an hour in total that's not that different to a monohull but where it really starts to make a difference is when you pick the revs up a bit so 2100 rpm now we're burning 34 litres per hour total of just under 70 and doing 10 knots and still it's incredibly comfortable quiet efficient or we can go further now we're picking it up 2800 a little bit more 2900 rpm and now we're doing 16 knots and it really feels no different at all it's a little bit of bow lift but very minimal now one of the unusual things about a motor catamaran is their motion through the water. They're generally very comfortable when they're going straight into the waves because they cut through them rather than bouncing or slamming as a full planing cruiser would. But when they're slightly at an angle you sometimes get a little bit of motion from port to starboard or starboard to port, a bit of a roll because it goes under one hull and then the other. It's not uncomfortable, it's just a slightly different motion than you tend to get in a mono hull. But on the other hand, it is a very relaxing way to travel, particularly when the scenery looks as good as this does. I just wanted to show you what that motion is like from up on the flybridge. We've got quite a short, steep sea here with the occasional bigger roller. And you can see the movement as it comes up and over the wave. And it's quite a short, 
slightly jerky movement, but you don't get any of the slamming. So it's just a different ride that you get on a monohull. In some ways a lot more comfortable, but then you do get this slightly strange jerking from side to side. All part of the catamaran experience. Now it can be a little bit daunting driving a catamaran for the first time. You've got this huge beam. I mean, this, this is over 23 foot wide, this boat, and 46 foot long, so it's a two to one ratio. But it can feel a little bit like helming a tennis court initially. But actually the joy is that you've got the engine so far apart that it's actually very easy to maneuver on the spot. So we're in Cape Town Harbor here. So if I put a little bit of port forward, starboard astern, and just balance it, you can see it will very quickly and neatly just spin on the spot. See how quickly and easy that's just spinning around. We're not moving forward or backwards. We're literally just revolving. So we've done a full 360 in the space of 20 seconds. And actually this, it was a sim similar boat to this. It was the very first boat I actually chartered myself. And despite that slightly daunting feel of such a big boat, it's a very user-friendly, easy to maneuver boat. Because you've got those twin hulls in the water, it doesn't get blown around a lot. You don't find the bow being blown across. And of course, that maneuverability is really helpful when you're in a tight spot. So don't be put off by the dimensions alone. It's actually a very nice, easy, controllable boat. I promised I'd show you the engine rooms and we're just going to take this opportunity while we're waiting for the bridge to have a little peek down here. And you can see the size of these hatches. Thankfully there are two really powerful gas struts which help support the weight. But look at how easy and open the access is to those engines. So that's the Yamaha 370 horsepower. It's tucked quite well forward, they're on a straight shaft, the rudder's behind. But look how big that hatch is. And that's because if you ever need to take the engines out, there is plenty of space. You can get a crane in there, lift it up, gently ease it back and lift it straight out of the hatch. There's no pulling apart of decks to do. And of course, when you're working on it, there is plenty of space to get down there. There's a perfectly comfortable ladder, even in bare feet. I can drop down there. But even though the engine is still running, it's really not that warm down here because you've got such good ventilation with this huge hatch. And there is plenty of space to move around. You can just see the shaft slowly turning there. And then all this room behind. So there is space for a generator here, a water maker, whatever you want to put. But most of all, it's just really good access to the engine itself. A couple of battery boxes, got the raw water strainer, there's no crawling around in a hot, limited headroom engine bay. I can stand out with my head out through the hatch, effectively limit this headroom. And really good access. Got the fuel filter on this side. The shaft is running under my feet. Exhaust. Fire extinguisher. And all nicely located out in white paint so you're going to see any leaks or any kind of problem nice and early. It's just the shadow of the bridge going over there. And there you go. Lots of sand insulation there. So once we close the hatch down again, all the noise disappears. And exactly the same on the other side, over here. Really move that off. Be quite quick because we are coming into our berth. We'll just have a very quick peek down there. Exactly the same on this side. There's the other one. So two big engine rooms, and that has got a generator in position down there. You can just see in that stern section. But even with that in place, you could fit another one alongside it. Got twin fuel filters and three batteries on this side. 
there you go. And they've also thought very carefully about cleats. There's plenty of cleats. We've got one on the side deck here. There's one tucked under that railing there. Then you can see we've got another mid cleat on this side. One cleat on the forward end of the hull on the port side and then two more right across the bow area here. So you're never short of a cleat to tie up to and that is important on a catamaran because again it does sit a little bit differently to a mono hull with all that beam so it helps to have lots of different options but it is such a joy to move along these side decks without even having to think where you place your feet. It also has a hydraulic platform so that you can launch and recover the tender but also uses a lovely water level bathing platform with a big bathing ladder right next to it. Great setup for life at anchor. It feels appropriate to finish this little video sitting on the foredeck of the Leopard 46 Power Cat because this is really what catamaran living is all about. Just a nice, easy, relaxed life, whether you're at anchor, cruising gently along, speeding home, you've got all the options at your fingertips. And it's not hard to see why catamarans are becoming more and more popular, especially big power catamarans like this. You get so much space, to entertain, to hang out, to move around, to use as a water sports platform, and of course, just to live on board. We've got that fabulous saloon, three or four big cabins, huge flybridge, and a big beamy cockpit. So while you may have to pay a little bit more for your marina spot, because you've got that huge beam, particularly in the Mediterranean, if you're spending a lot of time at anchor or your marina is not going to charge you double the width, then there's a lot to be said for life on board a power catamaran.